That's it. We did it. That was the most straightforward game we could have possibly had. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Now before we jump in, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, not only to stay up to date on all the videos we have coming out, we are trying to get them out daily, but on top of that we also have a giveaway going on right now for a free Kamigawa Neon Dynasty booster box. That's right, a full draft booster box. So if you would like to enter for that, all you got to do is subscribe. There's also some other ways you can enter, so please do check out the video that we have posted on that as well as the article on our website at itresolvesmtg.com but let's talk about today's deck guys this is uh as with yesterday's deck in fact brought to us by j villain mtg again j villain has his own youtube channel shares these decks out uh via aether hub as well as that youtube channel so please go check him out uh his link will be down below of course but this is Golgari Death Touch, which is funny enough, not a deck that I've really ever played that I recall. Uh, now, obviously it's built around Finn the Fangbearer. This is the 1-3 Death Touch for two. When a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters. Uh, if you get 10 poison counters, you lose the game. So the idea is to essentially play off of this and try and poison out our opponent. Uh, and with that, we've got quite a number of Death Touchers included in the list. So uh, Taju Bright, uh, Blight Blade, not a very exciting card normally, but a 1-1 Death Touch for one is perfect for this. Uh, we also have Varagoth here. This does have Death Touch as well as a very unique boast ability that allows us to kind of play whatever we need to play or, or pull whatever we need to pull out of our deck to play the following turn. Uh, Nighthawk Scavenger, just a fantastic creature anyway, but it does have Death Touch, so it works. Uh, we also have Henrika Domnathi. Now, this flips to have Death Touch, which is very nice, but additionally, you can use it to uh, either sack creatures for you and your opponent or draw some cards as you need to. Uh, now, Sarath the Viper's Fang basically gives all of our attacking creatures death touch so anything uh, any creature we own that is tapped is going to have death touch on top of that any untapped creature aside from Sarath has uh hexproof which is fantastic because it just means it's going to be very difficult for our opponent to deal with our things uh so all of that is in there we do have quite a lot of fight effects as you can imagine blizzard balls in here we also have inscription of abundance both of which are fantastic in this list we do have things like uh heroes downfall here to deal with creatures and planeswalkers as well as binding of the old gods similarly uh dealing with basically whatever we need it to and then we actually have wild shape which is kind of an interesting card one mana instant choose one until the end of the turn target creature you control has that base power and toughness and uh gains the type and creature ability so you can basically provide reach trample or uh hex proof depending on what you need in, in any given situation and the simple fact that this is a uh, one mana spell is pretty fantastic actually so that's that's basically it it's a pretty straightforward list we are pretty heavy on the snowlands because we do want those for the blizzard brawl in particular uh so mana can be a bit of an issue but I think we'll be okay. So let's jump in, guys. Let's jump right in. We'll have some fun with this. Hopefully get some wins and have a great time. And again, and MTG, thank you so much. Everybody, please go check out his channel down below. But let's jump right in. All right, guys, and here we are. And right off the bat, we're kind of seeing that mana become an issue. We are gonna have to mulligan this. Uh, only one black land, not enough. Now this is better. Uh, it's not a very exciting hand, but it is a hand that we can utilize. So I think we'll definitely keep this. Uh, and hopefully be able to make some things happen here. So uh, let's see what the opponent wants to do. It looks like they're considering their hand as well. I think we throw one of the wild shapes back. I think that's just the, the basic play here. Um, I think that makes the most sense. Uh, and then this Inscription of Abundance might be used to fight something off here, but I'd like to try and get a second green source so we can use it in tandem with the wild shape if need be. Um, but Turn one, Blight Blade, about as perfect as we can get. So I'm perfectly happy with that. Let's see what the opponent wants to do. Looks like Fading Hope is the play. That's annoying. Um, Finn. Uh, yeah, we'll play Finn out. Um, knowing that we didn't run into a counterspell there is very important. So I am going to try and push that out. Now, the 
That's a little scary, but we'll see what we can do. Um, all right, so first things first, let's get an attack in here. That's going to put two poison counters on there, which is perfect. Uh, and I think we just end up leaving the wild shape up for the hexproof. Um, I think that makes the most sense, and we'll hopefully let this work. Okay, uh, that's actually great for us. Um, just because that probably means they're not going to have a very good turn three play here. Uh, so yeah, all too happy with that. Now again, the amount of damage we do to the opponent is much less important than it normally would be. Um, I think we do this. Let's go Hexproof. We're gonna blank that spike field hazard and just make sure, oh perfect, we got another one. Uh, that's absolutely perfect actually. So let's get in there. That's gonna deal uh, six, or excuse me, four poison counters between the two creatures. So now next turn we do have lethal. We also have a wild shape in our hand that we can utilize here. Uh, as well as the Inscription of Abundance, we can double up depending on what we need to do, so. Let's see. Uh, I have high hopes. This seems pretty good. Um, yeah. I think that just means we win. <laughs> uh, that's pretty straightforward, actually. Um, yeah. So we play land, uh, and we just attack, and that's it. We did it. That was the most straightforward game we could have possibly had. A perfect example of what we're looking for with this list. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game two. Now, this is a very, very slow hand. Uh, is it one worth keeping, though? Um, you know, because we haven't run into this situation, I didn't run into this in practice either. I'm gonna give this a shot just to see how this ends up going. Now, a land's not a good draw for us. We don't need any more lands. I'd very much like to see just any kind of low mana spell. Just a one to two mana spell would be perfect. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I do like the Binding of the Old Gods. That does provide us with a little bit of uh, longevity. And actually, against a deck like the Fighter Class deck, we can get rid of that, uh, which is pretty useful. So. Let's go ahead and throw this out here. We do want to keep in mind Snowlands are important for us. Uh, getting the Blizzard Brawl out is going to be very, very important. Uh, and so we do want to make sure we've got those going for us. Let's go ahead and throw out the Nighthawk Scavenger. They might have a burn spell here. Uh, in fact, I would be very surprised if they didn't. Um, but we'll see what they do. Sure. Uh, that's annoying, but fine. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, I do think we are going to want to kill this fighter class the next turn, but we'll see. Um, especially now that they have sunk mana into it, that just is perfect for us. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get that off the field. Um, crucially here, if they play a creature, what we can do is play the Domnathi and just sack both, uh, if need be. Um, and I think that might be the case. So, uh, this is definitely a scary, scary creature for us. Um, do get a forest here, which is nice. We've drawn quite a bit of land, uh, which is really not helpful for us. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Um, and I am going to say let's each sack a creature. That keeps them from gaining the extra treasure from uh, targeting it and that kind of thing. So I think that's worth it. They also have the maul in the hands, so I really don't want them to have a creature on the field. Um, anytime we can kill it is very much worth it. Now, that's annoying, but they can't play the Maul on that, so uh, at least at the moment, so that's not really a problem. We are going to take three, of course, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, would love to get the Blood Sky Sire going. So the way this kind of works is when you boast it, uh, or if something attacks and you can boast it, you throw a card on top of your deck. You get to pick what card that is from your deck. So normally the play is to find um, really good as well uh find a removal spell of some kind or just something in general that can uh push through uh whatever they happen to play and so it's really nice to find like a binding of the old gods or something along those lines the thundering rebuke comes down uh which is annoying but that does mean that if they would like to activate the cave they have to sack the treasure which looks to be the case uh i very much wish we could destroy that while uh, we're here, but man, we are getting very unlucky with lands here. Uh, we have drawn way, way too many lands, uh, more so than I would expect in a deck like this, so that's a little frustrating, but 
Here they can just play them all if they'd like, but it looks like they're going to keep the uh, pressure on, which makes sense. Uh, a hero's downfall would be about perfect. That's not a hero's downfall. Um, I'm not sure what the right play is here. Um, it'd be really nice if we could activate this onto an opponent's creature solely to save ourselves the damage, but I suppose that might be a bit too much. Um, I think we don't. I think we wait. Um, that's a little tricky. We don't really want them to draw cards, but if they play any kind of permanent, we can deal with that. So that's not really the biggest issue. Now that's very scary. Flying first strike and haste. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. And we just draw another land. Uh, yeah, that was very, very unfortunate. We got so flooded there. We'll pass on. It's fine. It's cool. We'll go on to a game three right now. All right, guys, here we are for game three, and this is a pretty good hand, actually, so I'm all too happy to keep this. The Paladin is probably the best turn one play we actually have, uh, solely because it can ramp us into either Binding or Domnathi here, so I think we're definitely going to go that route. Um, I'm just going to pass here so we can play that treasure token out. Uh, just, again, ramping us is very, very important here. Uh, we'll get that one damage in, but that is okay. Um, and I think we're just going to go ahead and use it here for this. Now the question is, do we want to draw a card or do we just want to flip this? Um, I'm going to flip it. We're going to go for that. Uh, this is a really good turn three play. Um, so I'm all too happy to get that out. Control with flying, death touch, and or lifelink gets plus one plus one. Ah, that's fine. Uh, we should, probably should have seen that coming, but that's cool. Let's go ahead and play the Blight Blade here, uh, and we'll see what they've got. Uh, if this happens to be just a basic control deck, it's going to be very annoying to deal with, but uh, we can. So let's go ahead and play this. Let's get the wedding announcement out of here, um, and we'll just pass. We're not gonna we're not gonna offer the trade here for the one. Uh, we our our creatures are much higher value, so I think I'd rather not worry about that so much there's finn all right let's get you uh let's definitely definitely get this out of here uh we do not want that to be on the field um again i think we just wait uh we are gonna get another forest here wow they just have another cigar to splendor i mean we've got plenty of bindings so that's kind of okay uh let's get that forest out this is a card worth killing. There is no doubt about that. So we are definitely just going to keep these going. Um, I'm going to say no attacks. They just said nice. Do they have another Splendor? No, they do have a wedding announcement, but that's okay. Um, I think we just say no blocks. Sure. All right. Let's get another forest here. Do this. Um, all right, let's throw out the fin. Let's do this. We're gonna try and be very smart about this. Um, let's see, one, two, one, two, three. So we can't actually do. All right, let's throw some one one counters around. Let's do this and let's do this. All right, put two one one counters on. I actually think it's this. Um, we gain the life, target a creature we control, we'll just target Finn, and we'll target this. Cool. It's rid of that, uh, and we get an attack in here. Which does throw a couple poison counters on. I think that was the maximum we could have done there, I think that was just the best play. Um, there's the Doom Scar, sure. Kind of expected it, but it's a little annoying. Um... And here we just have to play the Serith. Now, unfortunately, they just have more cards than we do. So we are at the, the mercy of the top deck, which is not a great place to be. There's Borrowed Time, which is going to deal with that. Um, sure. Right. Okay. Well, 
we just play it out. Uh, at least it's a spell, right? Like that's the best thing we can get uh, is just a nice spell here. They, I'm sure, have a way to kill it. Yeah. Um, can't attack or block or crew vehicles. <laughs> um, I don't know if this works. We're just going to try it because I think otherwise we're going to lose. So I'm just going to get this alpha there or see if this actually works. It doesn't. I didn't think so, but I had to try. I was curious if like you give hexproof post, but it's already been targeted. It doesn't matter. Um, I just thought I'd try. Uh, all right. <clears throat> That's, I'm assuming, another Doom Scar. I get to attack in. <clears throat> okay. And we just get lands. Man, we are getting flooded with this list. It's kind of surprising because I really didn't think we had an overabundance of lands in the deck. Um, and we've had Binding of the Old Gods, which has been deck thinning us the whole time. So it's kind of surprising, actually. Um, there's a fin, which is not really good enough because it just kind of trades there. Um, and then we lose. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and just see what we get. Uh, chances are we aren't going to make this work. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead. We're going to concede. Let's move on to a game four, though, guys. We are uh, moving through these pretty quickly. All right, guys, here we are for our fourth game. This will probably be our last game, to be honest. Uh, we are running up on 20 minutes, and this is a pretty aggro-centric deck, so it's one that we can kind of push through very quickly, but we will see. Uh, this is definitely a keep. Uh, we've got the, the Four Storm Paladin. We've also got Finn and Binding of the Old Gods with the Wild Shapes, so this is, uh, this is pretty perfect. Uh, let's see what the opponent's on. Uh, opponent's giving us the nice little hello. Hello, my friend. Great to see you. All right, Usher of the Fallen definitely signaling to us that they are going to empty their hand pretty quickly here. Binding of the Old Gods should be very helpful. Uh, Wild Shape might actually be quite helpful as well. So let's see what happens. Uh, very curious, actually. Uh, if they attack, we might try and just trade. Uh, if they can just remove this, I'm sure they will, but... Um, the Usher of the Fallen isn't something that we would like to stick around, obviously. Um, but it seems to be reading into cards quite a bit. Yeah, I'm actually okay to take this trade. If they don't have something they can do here, uh, they might. Uh, and they might just spit out a token too, and like that's perfectly fine. I don't really care so much about the 1-1. One, one. I just don't want them to be able to continuously activate that cool uh all right let's do this let's drop finn uh so next turn we've got hero's downfall or wild shape depending on what we need to do uh and finn is actually a nice little blocker here so they could burn it out uh if they happen to have some burn in the hand but i'm glad we got rid of that usher i think that was the correct play uh also with removal in hand it's just one of those situations where like you know, if you keep removing their stuff, yeah, you remove your own, but we have a better end game, I would assume. Um, I could very easily be wrong, but it's just my assumption. Uh, so I think it's okay to do that. Uh, would have loved to have left up the wild shape there, but it, it wasn't gonna happen, obviously. So that is fine. Uh, next turn, most likely we just leave up the arrow's downfall. Uh, opponent playing a little bit slow. I'm curious to know if they're just like hardcore thinking through their plays or if they perhaps are learning the deck, uh, both of which are perfectly reasonable. Um, kind of curious to see. They could upgrade their 1-1 one -one if they wanted. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. So they're gonna go ahead and equip that up. Uh, I'm going to take the kill here. Um, they chose not to play a creature. They also spent all their mana on this. Um, and I think it's worth it just to get that out of there. Um, how messed up can we get them? Uh, let's do this. Let's throw Finn out there. We've got the wild shape that can provide it with hexproof which would get around this spell, which they most likely will be playing. 
No, they will not. Okay. Uh, that's actually fine. Yeah, that's totally fine. It does get stronger here, so we do have to consider that, but we have a way to deal with it, so that's not really a problem. Uh, what? Let's make sure if we control three or more snowlands. Yes, we do have indestructible, so let's do this. Let's get rid of them. Yeah, that's fine. We both get indestructible, but they tap their creature, uh, which is very nice for us. Uh, and we'll go ahead and attack in here. Obviously, they're going to get to create a treasure token, most likely, but that's fine. We could have forced the issue, um, but I don't think that was necessary. All right, let's see what they want to do. Uh, they may try and remove Finn this turn, perhaps. Uh, worth noting, we should probably binding the uh, the pick here, but I want to leave up that wild shape. That seems very important. They're going to get to draw quite a few cards here, though. Well, one card and a treasure token, which is very good. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Really curious to see how this actually plays out. Um... I think we take the opportunity to fight here. Uh, let's do this. Whoops. That uh, and that. Let's just fight these off. I'm kind of trying to force the issue here as well, but it looks like they're not going to take the bait. Okay. <clears throat> now we can Binding of the Old Gods and do some some shenanigans here. So, let's Binding. That's so annoying. Um, I think we have to kill that, though. That's such a powerful uh, in enchantment uh, or equipment. Hmm. I'm gonna say no attacks. If they wanna, I'm cool with trading these off, but we're gonna try and force the issue a little bit here. They do get to unequip this if they'd like to, to save that. Wow, okay. Yeah, um, hmm. <laughs> it's really good, okay. That's also very good. Let's do this. Now I'm wishing we had attacked in, because this is obviously not going to happen. Um, hmm. What can we draw? There's very little we can draw here. No blocks, we're going to have to take the six. This doesn't have, I mean, well, I guess it does. I don't know. Maybe that was incorrect. Maybe we should have tried to... Oh. Hmm. So they just tap that though, that's the problem. We have to kill this. Hmm. Sorry guys, I'm like really overthinking this. Um We say no attacks, but they just get to Hmm. 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 I don't think we're going to win this one. Um, trying desperately to keep in this game, truthfully, uh, and it's just not going to happen, I don't think. So they can exile Finn. Oh, they can just activate that, too. Well, they can still do both, but they can exile Finn if they'd like. I'm trying to think what we could draw. This is so self-protecting. It's very annoying. Yeah. So we have to force the issue, but the problem is they can just, yeah, do this. 
Um, yep. And then they can just equip back up. And now they've got a second cave. Uh, well, in this case, first cave, I suppose, but you know what I mean? And there we go. That's the loss. God, man, that was rough. Uh, okay, well, let's let's chat about this. Okay, so first and foremost, again, I want to thank Jvillain MTG. Please check out his channel down below because he did create this deck, and so I want to make sure we credit where credits due. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't get very many wins. Only one out of four, uh, which is kind of bad. Um, now I will say. A couple of those games, I definitely think we got flooded, so maybe there's some adjustments that need to be made on the land count. Uh, it doesn't need very many lands, so it should be fairly easy to kind of push through uh, and not necessarily have the, t the the higher land count. Now, I don't actually remember what the land count is, so we'll see. But uh, regardless, it's still a fun deck. I love the Death Touch sub-theme. I love Finn as a kind of flagship card and being able to poison counter the opponent out. And it does work. I mean, we saw it work at least once, so that's helpful. Um, and truth be told, I think if we had just gotten some better not lands uh we would have been a lot better off but uh all that to say it was a really fun time and again jay villain thank you so much for sharing this list but uh overall guys not the best list it just it didn't seem to fit the the meta very well we were finding ourselves struggling against a lot of things um maybe that's just my experience or maybe i played wrong either way it's totally cool thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it hope you enjoyed this one make sure you subscribe to enter the giveaway and just to stay up to date on all the content but i love you guys very much have a fantastic day i can't wait to see you guys again very soon for some more gameplay videos